Scott, welcome back to Think Tech. It's the 3 p.m. block on a given Monday for Code Green. I'm Jay Fidel. I'm the guest host today, but our real host is a guest. He's a visiting guest, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's Howard Weir, the traditional you know, host for Code Green. Mm -hmm. Welcome to your show, Howard. Thanks so much for inviting me, Jay. It is an honor. Let me put a title on this. Uh, mm -hmm. This is uh, an unradical approach to global warming. Mm -hmm. I knew, I mean, I, I wish I knew exactly what you meant by that, but let's, mm -hmm. we're going to get into it. Mm -hmm. And the tagline is no unintended consequences, mm -hmm. as opposed to the other kind, which are yep. mm, intended, yeah, con intended, intended consequences. consequences. Yes. Yeah. So let's break the show down into two parts. Mm -hmm. The first part, um, I want to talk about um, uh, geoengineering mm -hmm. uh, the planet. I guess that mm -hmm. means engineering the planet. Yep. And yep. the planet, you know, does seem to need engineering because you know, despite, uh, you know, the views of many millions of people, um, you know, we aren't doing a whole lot about global warming. Mm -hmm. It's getting warmer. This summer is a good example mm -hmm. of that here and everywhere. Um, and this is changing the world as we know it. It's changing. Of course, it's making animals extinct. It's, it's burning off all the glaciers. Uh, you see news uh, every day. There is going to be a, a horrendous price that humanity will have to pay mm -hmm. for this. Mm -hmm. um, and, and regrettable that uh, our, our governments and our leadership organizations and people don't seem to take it seriously. So we get deeper into it all the time. The next generation uh, mm -hmm. will have a terrible time yep. over this. Yep. But mm -hmm. we have to talk about the macro and the micro. Let's talk mm -hmm. about the macro first. Let's talk about geoengineering the planet. Oh, okay. which you say may not be as good an idea as it seems to be. Well, let's talk about that, but let me defend the state of Hawaii, first state in the nation to say 100% clean electrical energy by the year 2045. That was radical, except that California was a copycat. They usually lead in everything. No, they copied the little old Hawaii. And then New Mexico came next, next and a whole host of states and cities have followed in our footsteps. So we're taking it seriously. Okay, but, but that's, the, that's a small part of the that's country. That's a small part, yeah. That's a small part of the world. Mm -hmm. um, now, you were talking about uh, scientists, I guess, and mm -hmm. engineers who would like to engineer the whole planet uh, mm -hmm. and sort of roll back global warming. How do mm -hmm. you do that, Howard? Well, one thing we could do is scrap all the fossil fuel burning power plants in the world and replace them with nuclear power plants. Nothing controversial about that. <laughs> <laughs> but you, the proponents are right. Nuclear power plants emit zero CO2. And they're much, much safer than they used to be. And after Fukushima, we know, don't put them right next to a, an ocean, especially one with a rift zone. <laughs> yes, yes. So that, that's one solution, but just a wee, wee, wee bit controversial. Yeah, I, I think yeah. so. And mm -hmm. I think as a mm -hmm. practical matter, uh, you know, in fact, uh, that's not going to happen in Hawaii. No. Or, uh, or we have a constitution. People are, sometimes they make a mistake about the constitution. The constitution does not outlaw nuclear power in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. What it says is you have to have a vote, uh, a special vote. Um, of the mm -hmm. legislature, and I want to say it's uh, either two thirds or three quarters. So it's a, mm -hmm. a hyper vote of the legislature, um, and then you could theoretically do it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know uh, what the circumstances would be to change people's minds, but most people who speak on the issue here mm -hmm. uh, treat nuclear as a you know a violation of mm -hmm. all the environmental considerations they yeah. like to protect. Yep. So I told you there'd be opposition, and, and you just it delivered it. But that is definitely one method of global cooling, a radical method. So let's look at another method where you take a volcano that's about to explode and you infuse it with hyper explosives such that it explodes like Krakatoa exploded in 1816. We had a summer of winter in 1816 because the effusion of the volcanic matter was so, it was worldwide and it was so thick that it blocked 
many of the sun's rays, and we didn't really have summers. For that, a while. Cooled, that cooled off that the planet. That cooled the planet. So some people are saying, let's just find a volcano that's about to explode. They, they have found one and just explode the holy heck out of it. How's that? How, how do you explode them? Don't they explode naturally? They I mean, explode naturally. You can't, you can't go in there and explode the thing yourself, can you? Well, not yourself, but uh, scientists with their armaments can. Or at least they think they can. They're proposing this. Okay. Well, might be a little on the controversy. I put that on the far side of nuclear. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. well, what, what else you got? Okay, so otherwise you infuse the atmosphere. Actually, the troposphere goes up about 36,000 feet. That's where uh, airplanes fly. That's the last of the thick air. And right above the troposphere, you spray aerosols. Aerosols that block some Didn't of the Didn't you want to get suit. rid of aerosols? We ago. did, and now we want to bring them back, but not in our atmosphere, but in the upper atmosphere, because they too block some of the sunlight. It would cool the planet. I can see the t shirts now bring back the aerosols. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, really, I think yeah. the message of all these, these three possibilities mm -hmm. you've raised uh, is actually very helpful, because none of them are practical. Mm -hmm. None of them will ever happen, I'm sorry to say. Um, and what it does show us, though, is that if we were thinking about some grand geoengineering plan to save, to save the planet, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. forget about it. That's, that's, yeah. that's what I get out of it. Mm -hmm. And instead, what we really have to think about is house by house, office building by office building, power plant by power plant all over the world. And we have to develop the political, war, political will all over the world uh, to change the way we do power and to change the way you know, we, we use the resources. Um, we have to start working on that right now, and I mean, we've been saying this for 20 years anyway. Well, I've been saying it for 40 years. Okay, yeah. Yeah, don't yeah. give away your age. <laughs> yeah. But I certainly agree, I totally agree, yeah. and, and yeah. It's, it's like you know, repeating it doesn't mm -hmm. help. There needs mm -hmm. to be political action, mm -hmm. and we haven't had that yet. Yep. We're gonna take a short break so we can sort of integrate all oh, this information. Can't I do one more? Uh... There's another possibility? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll see if this is any more realistic. Yeah, okay. We throw hundreds, thousands of tons of fine iron particles into the ocean. How does that sound? So that would kill all the, the uh, sea no, life in the no, ocean. it's above, it's in the areas that are full of what's called phytoplankton. It is a many, many, many little sea creatures that actually behave like plants, in that they absorb carbon dioxide. And the iron particles somehow stimulate their absorption so that they grow like mad and absorb all of this carbon dioxide. But that's just the beginning. With all this phytoplankton, then whales and many other sea creatures can start gobbling them up like mad. And we know that we have a deficiency of fish already. Fish are just depleting, depleting, depleting because of overfishing. Now we get this explosion of fish beginning with the explosion of phytoplankton. And the food chain, the seafood chain, just goes up, up, up while the carbon dioxide gets absorbed, absorbed, absorbed. Now, what could possibly go wrong with that? Um, everything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, it actually sounds pretty cockamamie to me, but okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it would take you know like fifty years of research to make anyone feel this. This would not destroy the oceans. Yeah, you just throw a bunch of iron in there, see what happens. There you go. Yeah. All right, and and this makes Let's me see. want to take my break. Uh, oh, That's okay, Howard okay. Weird. He's the customary host of uh, <laughs> Code Green, which is about energy, which is about uh, saving the planet and dealing with climate change. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been talking about uh, geoengineering the planet without any real chance of success. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but the point is that mm -hmm. you, you, it's not likely we'll be able to geoengineer the planet, so we have to work on it house mm -hmm. by house, mm -hmm. building by building, you know, power plant by power plant. And right after this break, we'll come back and how it's gonna tell us how to do that. There are ways, we have our ways. Mm -hmm. Thanks to our ThinkTech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Munley and the Friends of ThinkTech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Dwayne Carisu, 
the Hawaii Community Foundation, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Right. So the mission is to save the planet, nothing less. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the problem is political will. We do have at least potentially mm -hmm. the technology mm -hmm. to do that um, on a small, you know, house by house, building by building, power plant by power plant basis. Mm -hmm. And so for the rest of the show, we're going to see what Howard, how, how it really feels about this. Mm -hmm. We are going to make him a, a tyrannical leader mm -hmm. because the mm -hmm. only leader who can get this kind of thing done, who can force people to adopt yeah, the mm -hmm. notions that are necessary to save the planet and cool the planet, okay, would have to be a tyrannical leader, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say. So let's make you, Howard, tyrannical. you don't seem like a tyrannical guy, but no. let's make you a, a tyrannical leader. What would you do? I would first go to, I would uh, understand the urban heat island effect, and we just happen to have a slide that illustrates the urban heat island effect. Okay, so uh, on the left axis is temperature, the ambient temperature. And as we see on the left, rural temperature, lots of trees, 85, then suburban, get higher, 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 commercial, then we get downtown, now we're up to 92, then we get back to residential park and uh, uh, rural farmland and so forth. Now, we're going to take this, that's the big notion. Now, I happen to be an energy codes guy, so what do we do first and foremost to address that big You flatten the code. Area? I mean, you flatten, you flatten the buildings. You flatten that, that, that chart, yeah. right? You make, you make everything like rural, mm -hmm. and then you bring down the temperature everywhere. Yeah, yeah. and who, who needs a building? I mean, what, we're, aren't we sitting under a tree right now? I don't know. Maybe not. No. Yeah. Okay, maybe that wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. But what, what, what is your point so here with this first chart? first and foremost, to cool, especially that high point, we change energy codes such that the roofs of the buildings, and incidentally, it mentioned the suburbs, also the suburbs, also the low-rise commercial buildings, especially in the warmer sections of this nation, we make them cool roof. And that, they don't have to be white. White is best. But there's all kinds of other colors, lighter tone colors, that have extreme reflectivity. And reflect extreme, the heat back up. Reflect, reflect the, 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 the back sun's up, rays back up. And then very high, what's called emittance. What heat does penetrate into the roof emits back into the atmosphere. It doesn't go all the way through. Do it, this by code. Yeah, you do this by code. And guess what? It's already code. The oh, wow. Hawaii is just now adopting the... International Energy Conservation Code 2015, and it's right there in the code. So what's holding us up? Oh, it's, it's there. All new buildings in climate zones one, two, three. I, I participated at the national level. This is something I fought very You've hard You got an in. award for that. Yeah. Oh, I did, yeah, didn't I? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's already in for the warmer climate zones. In my opinion, we have, need to... Uh, move it into the middle climate zones. There will be a hearing in October. I'll be arguing for that. But guess which state in the nation led the way in requiring reflective roofs? Hawaii. Hawaii. I knew that. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to move into something called cool walls. It turns out that especially for taller buildings, and this makes sense, you only have a little bit of roof space. You've got a heck of a lot of wall space. And the sun is not striking the roofs or the walls all the time, but a lot of the time. So why don't we make walls also reflect the sun's heat back up? Show me a picture. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, how about the next slide? 
that picture. Now that is really cool. This is an extreme cool wall. I don't think every, oh, and it also has zero fenestration, zero uh, uh, windows on this. If this was the west side, and that's the hottest side of the building. So here's an extreme example of a cool wall. Now, not everybody's going to go along with that. I, I learned that the hard way some years ago. So we make cool walls an option. And there is one state in the nation that has in its energy code cool walls as an option. How do you suppose that? That's right? Hawaii. That's Hawaii. You know, and, just, a, just a thought is you go into hot climates. I'm thinking mm -hmm. of Greece on the Mediterranean or Italy. Mm -hmm. If you look at these, um, you know, these uh, cities and towns mm -hmm. um, in hot areas, mm -hmm. they have walls that look like that. Yeah, and that really bright just, color white walls. It just happens to be our last slide, showing that there is nothing new under the sun. But we, we will get to that. Okay, let's go to the next so, one. Then. Well, no, 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 I'm not stopping it. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, I'm running out of time. Okay, let's go to the next yes, slide. Yes, you you're, are you're, running you're out of time. You're the dictator. I'd like to get through it. Yeah. Now, one way that I got the idea for cool walls was this car, because it is, in, when it's sitting in the sun's heat, it is 12 degrees cooler than a car with ordinary paint. This has secret sauce in the car paint. Why does this make it white? Uh, like because not, not everybody wants white. You know, especially, you know, people are picky. But this has titanium dioxide mixed into the paint. And that's the same stuff that uh, you have your sunscreen with. And they mix titanium dioxide in. Our human eyes can't perceive the color difference, but it does, the titanium dioxide allows the radiant sun heat to get into the coating and then reflects it right back out. There's no law anywhere that requires this kind of paint or light color paint. People do have the choice of a dark color paint if they mm -hmm. like, isn't that true? If they like it. So if I make you this uh, benevolent tyrant person, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, would you do this? Would you? command this to be the case? Uh, not everybody would have to have uh, lime green cars, but they would have to have, a little off subject, but they would have to have uh, reflective cars. Well, this is a, you know, this is kind of an emergency, don't you think, yeah. climate change? Would you yeah. order them to repaint their cars? Uh, no, just, just new cars, or when they're getting a new paint job. Okay, Either how about new buses? Cars, uh, buses, sure. Trucks? Trucks, sure. Railroad cars? Sure. Everything? Everything, yeah. Oh, I, I was going to get to that. I'll, I'll divert a little bit. If you go to especially southern Florida and you drive along the highways, you notice they're white. You say, what in the world is going on here? Answer, they have so much coral floating around there and they've harvested so much coral. They just crush the coral and mix it with emulsifiers and boom, there's your highway. It's a white highway. It, it just reflects, take, reflects the, the sun's, the sun's uh, heat. heat. Yeah, 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 light. Yeah. So that, that's beyond my, my scope, but it's another idea. Okay, let's go on, on onto your track. Yeah, uh, I, uh, you keep getting me diverted here, but let's see what the next slide holds for us. Okay, believe it or not, every one of these walls is a reflective wall, which is almost exactly what you were talking about. How can that dark wall in the foreground there be reflective? Answer. I wouldn't have guessed that it could be. No, that's because you haven't heard me yet. I'm about to hear this, yeah. I think. The secret sauce, titanium dioxide. Even with a darkish wall like that, you infuse it with titanium dioxide. We talk in terms of reflectivity percentages and absorptivity reflect, uh, percentages. If that were ordinary paint, the, it would be maybe 17, 18% reflective and say 77% absorptive. But because of the secret sauce in there, titanium dioxide, that wall is 41% reflective. So you Twice don't have much. to have, yeah. So a, a and, question or two on that, though. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, um, uh, would, you, would you require people to repaint their, their homes with titanium paint? Uh, no, I would say when you, oh, there you go. You get to the manufacturer's level. You make this a federal law. in say half the climate zones in the nation, you can only sell paints 
infused with titanium dioxide. Get oil. it right at the root. Yeah. Yeah. So you go to the hardware store. I want purple. Okay. For exterior. Okay, you got purple. And it's even deep purple. That's 33% reflective. There's a song by that. Um, okay. that's, that's purple rain. Uh, so, but the problem is, uh, you know, I had a titanium bike once years ago, mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. the frame was made with titanium, which mm -hmm. is a, it's an airframe type uh, metal, and it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. Are you denying that this will be much more expensive than regular paint? Yep, because it has gotten to the point of the wonders of capitalism. You <laughs> mass produce stuff, and the cost goes down. I, I can cite instance after instance when we force new technology into the energy codes, at first, it was pretty expensive. Mass production took over. Boom! It's it's a parity price now. Okay. Well, same that's, same that's with an interesting reflective. idea. Yeah. yeah. So uh, what's better, the next one? Let's go let's, moving uh, forward. Yeah. Now you're slowing me down here. Here's a prime example. This is La EA Elementary School, and the important numbers are on the right there, upper. Uh, that is where we left the original paint. This is it's called the infrared. So the Colors aren't accurate, but where we left original paint, 121 degrees, this is on a very sunny day, we did uh, reflective paint on the bottom down to 72. That looks to me like a delta T of 50 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's a lot. This, this is a, a Hawaii instance. This is the, the titanium paint again. Yeah. yeah. Huh? Titanium, but it looks like a normal color. It's just infused with titanium dioxide. Why doesn't Hawaii do this right now? Uh, because you haven't passed an a strong enough energy code. Mm. We have to get you into office. I mean, mm -hmm. as a benevolent uh, dictator. Uh, yeah. Okay, what's but next? I think we've got one or two more slides here. Ah, here is a high-end resort or high-end home. Needless to say, that's very, very reflective. And if we go to the next slide, Here's a low-end home. I believe this is in uh, Mexico. And as you can tell, this is probably a very inexpensive home, but the roof is just a corrugated roof, but it has high reflective coating on the roof surface, meaning that it's going to be cool. Mm -hmm. a, if that roof had a dark paint on it on a hot day, it would be easily 170 degrees on the roof. My guess is that uh, temperature is maybe 105, 105, 70 okay. degree delta T. And then, of course, the, uh, the walls, likewise, are reflective. And th this is low-income stuff here. You see this in the south. You see this in Florida, right? Yeah. And yeah. certainly you see it below mm -hmm. the south of the border. But you oh. don't see it with titanium dioxide in it. Or there could be other interior reflective uh, mm -hmm. uh, substances. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask you about that. Titanium mm -hmm. is one thing. What, what, mm -hmm. what other materials ah, would, would suffice? Strange you should ask. Scientists re recently were researching sharks that are go uh, way, way down deep. They're kind of bottom feeders. And the only type of light that gets to them is a very small spectrum blue light. It's the shark. And the sharks emanate a green color, a lime green color, just like that uh, Toyota we saw. What's going on? Turns out there's a molecular shift from blue to green to fluoresce, make it like a fluorescent color. It turns out that we can do the same process with coatings, roof coatings or wall coating. And that increases the solar reflectance up at least, so far, research at 20 degrees. What, what is the material then? It's a or it's, it's a compound that changes the electrons in the molecules such that instead of having a, a, a longer range color spectrum, an electron flip and puts it into a, a shorter range. So which, one, which one of these uh, solutions would you order uh, the paint manufacturers uh, oh, to, so, to so adopt? So far, I, I just, you, you're a futurist, so I gave you a futuristic answer. I, I would stick with right now titanium dioxide or any other economically equally performing uh, inf uh, in, in, infusion. Okay, next. Yeah, next. Ah, this has reached Hawaii. This is an article out of a local uh, magazine. 
And here are two vendors, uh, paint, roof painters and wall painters, saying, let's go reflective. Yeah. So it has reached the way. Yeah, that's, so, that's a picture of a project in Hawaii. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And so, those are the two people who uh, make it happen. They, they're, they're business owners. Well, are, they, are they using uh, titanium in this paint? Uh, I would assume so, yeah. That's, that's the best way to achieve here. So the the, so, the so building on the right-hand side is a white color, and the building on the left is yeah, a... Yeah, th this is in action. They started repainting. This is a, a townhouse complex that needed redoing anyway. So the owner said, as long as we're doing this, let's get it cool and reflective. Don't well, you think a government incentive would be helpful to you know, encourage mm -hmm. people to repaint their projects mm -hmm. instead of wait, you know, wait yeah, for another yeah, time yeah. or wait for a new project. Um, mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, the, uh, the titanium is going to cost money and mm -hmm. people are going to be reluctant to pay the extra money, mm -hmm. so they're going to defer the new paint job, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm -hmm. the government has to step in and, yeah. you know, what kind of, what would you do, a tax credit? A uh, tax credit would be most excellent. There's an institution called Hawaii Energy. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Sure That's I a am. small joke. Um, you're very familiar with that. Uh, just encourage Hawaii Energy to heavily incentivize. Some kind of incentive, yeah. yeah. Re reflective roof coatings, reflective wall coatings. Very exciting. So what mm -hmm. else you got? Uh, given our lack of time, let's go maybe to the last slide. Yes, here's the last slide. Theme, there is nothing new under the sun. This is a Grecian village. Look at the architecture. Those buildings are at least 200, if not 300, if not 400 years old. And along the southern Mediterranean and in the uh, Mideast, where it gets hotter than blazes in the summer, in traditional architecture, you will always see the exterior of the buildings plastered, not just a little coating, but just plastered, li literally with plastered uh, white. Why? To reflect the sun's heat. Notice no air conditioning. Yeah. With all of this, no air conditioning necessary. Yeah. Oh, well, Which means you save energy on the other end. Well, the building code says that if you don't have air conditioning, you shall do a whole bunch of nice things, and you'll have ceiling fan. Especially since our temperature is getting warmer and warmer, we have lots of nights, or days, and nights, where you need some kind of mechanical cooling, and ceiling fans require as little as one twentieth as much energy as air conditioners, maybe even less than 120th. Well, let's assume that you were not only the um, you know, benevolent uh, tyrant mm -hmm. of, uh, of Hawaii and the country, but you were the benevolent tyrant of the world, mm -hmm. Howard, and I, I can see that. Mm -hmm. I can visualize that so easily. It's your personality and your style. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but you know, even with that, um, changing the way buildings reflect mm -hmm. the sunlight may not be a solution that's timely uh, mm -hmm, and sufficiently mm -hmm. you know, ubiquitous to actually save the planet. Yeah. So you're not saying that this is the only solution, not are you? Not the only solution. I'm saying let's go all nuclear and let's find that active volcano and just blast the holy heck out of it. There's a short-term solution. All right. Wow. Saving yeah. the planet, Howard. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, <laughs> Howard Wig, the, the true host. Mm -hmm. of uh, Code Green. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. My huge pleasure.